What's going on, online fitness coaches? Welcome to another episode of the Change Lives Make Money Online Trainer Podcast. This is the number one show for online fitness coaches who are trying to grow a successful online business. In today's episode, I'm joined by my boy, the one, the only, from Cochrane, Alberta, currently residing in Kelowna, British Columbia, Cole, the wolf, da Silva. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo guys he legit gave me an intro like that um because we just watched the fucking logan paul and mayweather fights and i was talking about how if you guys watch any fighting all right any fighting at all there's like the bruce buffer right everybody knows who bruce buffer is in the ufc he's the best guy like intros are amazing all this stuff and then sometimes i'm like you're the bruce buffer right like you just everything's on point it's super smooth it's super intense and then sometimes i'm like you're every other announcer that's in any other fucking platform. In I, don't, I just don't get why you got to talk so much shit when I always feel like I do a good job saying, Hey, I like, I'm just saying, I'm a boy, my best friend. You're like fucking worst introduction ever. I'm like, that, 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 that's why I got to say it. Cause I'm your best right. friend. I gotta, I gotta let you know what the fuck. It's the same thing with the glasses, bro. Don't make me bring up that story too. Whatever, bro. bro. What Moving on. Um, okay guys. So, uh, I just want to remind you guys, I'm giving away a thousand dollars cash in the month of June. So if you guys like winning money, all you guys need to do, screenshot any podcast episode, share it to your Instagram stories, and tag me at BMarkFit. Just by doing that, you're interested in $1,000 cash. Last person I gave $1,000 to used it to buy a plane ticket in Hawaii. So what would you do if I sent you $1,000 over PayPal? So screenshot, share, tag, at BMarkFit, entered to $1,000 cash. So dude, let's take them way back. I'm super excited for this fucking podcast, man. Talking about the origin story of PT domination and like what started before it kind of what like sparked through a nation. All right. The original fucking company that like basically brought everything together right now. Yeah. I think that it's such a good time. It's so random that we ended up having our company wide team meeting on the same day that we did the origin story of PT domination. Yeah. Cause right now at uh, PT domination, we've got 31 people that are working with us to help us build this movement. And so you guys see me and you guys see Cole, but what you don't see is we actually have like 30, actually, I think there was 32 people. 32. Yeah. There's 32 people in our meeting. And it's like, it feels like every month we do a company uh, wide team meeting. It's like the number of people that tune in are like slowly growing, which is like absolutely crazy to me. And when we think back, like guys, Cole and I started uh, like really working together back in 2016 yeah. and back where a lot of you guys are currently at in your coaching business. Like when I met Cole, <clears throat> when me and him, like when he became my fitness client, um, I was making about $8,000 a month. Um, I had about 30 online fitness coaching clients. They're paying me $250 a month. And uh, I just started coaching fitness competitors and I was just getting this shit off the ground. And yeah, that was, that was like seven years ago. Yeah. Years hundred percent. It was, ago. it was, it was no, um, my Five show months. was November, 2016 it was my first show. And we worked together for six months mm. in order to get to that show. So that was the actual prep time. And I remember that like the, when you just first started coaching fitness competitors and like actual competitor coaching clients, I was in your first batch of actual students. Yep. <clears throat> first batch of actual fucking clients. So it was like, it's been crazy. Like the amount that's actually changed since then. So if you guys think about like, I want you guys to take a look at your coaching business right now. And like, uh, and we just also had a conversation with Don Lamb about he, how he really didn't start his coaching business till 2017, which is crazy in itself. So I want you guys to take a look at your coaching business right now. And like, really take a look at where it's at. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, as we're talking throughout this podcast, I want you to take, like, take a note of where your coaching business is at. And what I want you to ask yourself is like, where could I get in the next five years if I went all in? Yeah. That's the purpose of this podcast. Like, where would I be in the next five years if I went all in? So <clears throat> me and Cole, let's like kind of give you guys a backstory. So me and Cole, we worked together. Um, you know, he was my fitness client. He wanted to work with aesthetic or he wanted to work with aesthetic nation, but I was like, honestly, bro, like <clears throat> you don't have the experience and you haven't done anything yet. Like you haven't won any shows. You haven't really done anything. So I told him, I'm like, if you win two fitness competitions and you get your personal training certification, like I'll give you a training spot in my position in my team. And honestly, like, I feel like <laughs> I gave him enough hoops that I wouldn't have to give him a training. It was position. more of like an ultimatum. I, th I feel like it was like, uh, so, so at the time guys, there was B and then two other coaches working with him and it was more of like uh, me and him were building a decent relationship together, but we weren't really, like, really close yet. We weren't like um, to the point where it was like more of like, uh, yeah, of course, I'll give you an opportunity in the company. I think it was more like a uh, like a bunch of hoops and a little bit of an ultimatum. Like, oh, if you win the shows, then then I'll consider it. I was like, okay. And I fucking went and got my certification, literally started sleeping four hours a night, grinding so fucking hard, won both shows and got certified. And then basically was like backed him into a corner and was like, all right, let's go. 
Dude, and it's so, so funny that he says that because when I actually first took Cole on, I didn't have anyone, like I didn't have any clients to give. <laughs> like, I'm like, bro, I don't have any clients for you. And I'm like, you have 200 Instagram followers. So <laughs> I did. I legit, guys, no joke, came and you know, started working with Brian with 200 to 300 Instagram followers on my account. So I'm like, well, I guess I, guess I kind of fucking screwed myself here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I hired Cole and I just started working. He just started working with me. I was like, okay, so like, I don't really have, a lot of training clients to give you. So what I can give you is mentorship. So let's just start working together every single day. So basically what he would do is he'd go work his iron working job. And then when he'd get off, we would just work together for an hour or two a day. And um, I remember and there wasn't a lot of time that we'd work during the week, but we did work a lot of weekends. A fuck load, man. Like I remember when we go to Starbucks, right? Like the first time I taught you how to do macros. Yeah, it was a Starbucks down on 17th. Um, it was actually the first time I realized what an MLM was as well. Funny story. Somebody tried to pitch us an MLM in Starbucks and Brian <laughs> bitched him out. It was fun. I never heard about one because this was like fresh in Calgary, guys. Like fresh, like knowing what other businesses were other than me drinking, doing drugs and being an iron worker. Um, but Starbucks was one of our favorite coffee shops, but it was like the not so busy one down in 17th. Uh, Purple, Kawa. Perk, Purple Perk, yeah. Kawa uh, as well. Purple Perk's my favorite one to this day still, but Kawa was a really good one down on 8th Street. Like yeah. we coffee shops was our grind. So I'd get off work and we'd just go grind at a coffee shop and he'd teach me macros and teach me like meal plans and training clients and et cetera. That's how I originally started to learn um, how to like really utilize my certifications to a certain degree. Cause like, obviously, obviously you guys, and I'm sure you guys know this, like, you know, you get your personal training certification and it teaches you a little bit, but like, that's not where you actually learn how to no. coach clients. Like you actually learn how to coach clients, like through experience and, you know, hopefully having a mentor that can actually like help you through like coaching with clients. And so if you're, if you're listening to this and you're inexperienced, it's really good to like kind of work. It might be a good idea to get a job like underneath somebody like a Don Lamb or somebody else that's hiring because you want to kind of learn. But I remember we built that set Ignatian together, dude. And um, over the course of time, it ended up just getting progressively busier and busier. And honestly, I remember back when me and Cole were running Aesthetic Nation, like we actually had the intention of like, we wanted to make it like a, like a million dollar business. We're like, let's change everyone's fucking lives. Let's take this thing to the moon. Let's freaking go. We're so excited. We had a team of like hungry people. Um, but obviously, you know, shit's like, shit doesn't always go the way that you want it to. Yeah. And so um, me and Cole becoming business partners was a funny story because he was still working as a trainer in my company. There was four people that were employed <clears throat> at five. Actually, there was five people. And uh, I was in Brazil. And I remember there was one person that was working for my business that took some actions that were like rubbed me the fucking wrong way. And uh, <clears throat> if you actually know me, like if you're like really close to me, you know that like I'm the nicest fucking person ever. But if I feel like you're fucking me over, like I'm the opposite of nice. Like I'm like the worst person across. It's very, very intense. And it's very, very quick. Like attitude can change on like literally the fucking like inch of a dime right away. It's, it's, as, it's as soon as my gut tells me that somebody has shady intentions. Mm -hmm. As soon as my gut tells me something, somebody has shady intentions, I am like, for, I think it's because when I was younger, like my, like I was like raised in a house where there was like a lot of like trauma. And so it's really easy for me to turn my emotions off when I need to. And so if I feel like somebody's like fucking trying to pull the wool over my eyes and I can see it instantly, the emotions go off and I just do what I need to do. So I remember... I was in uh, Brazil and I realized that somebody was trying to pull the wool over my ass. So I remember I texted them and I was like, you're fired. And they're like, what the fuck? Like after a year and a half, I'm like, yeah. Like, I'm like, I know, like, I, I see what you're doing. And like, I heard about some shit and I'm just not fucking happy with it. So you're fucking fired. Explosion <clears throat> in aesthetic nation. Absolute explosion. By the way, guys, again, Brian was in Brazil. So this was 4 a.m. our time. No, it was even earlier than that. It was like 2 to 3 a.m. our time. So the explosion happens and then fucking everything's just started to unravel. Like there was fucking full on panic throughout what was going on. This was just me fresh starting into the company. Um, like You had been there for it. about six months. Yeah, it was intense. It was a fucking lot. Yeah, you were, been there, you were there for six months. But I remember when it happened, I just like texted the person like you're fucking fired. I remember um, I uh, that person texted Cole I was like, dude, um, like you're, you know, Brian's like, Brian's going to do the same thing to you. Like, he's just going to use you and abuse you. And I was like, I was like, honestly, bro, like, I'm not fucking like that. I'm like, I'm like, and I trust you completely. And I'm so confident in you that I'm willing to give you 25% of my business right now. 
And it's literally, I remember as soon as he said that, um, because again, guys, this was six months into us working together. This was me and Brian still kind of feeling each other out. We were friends. We were still hanging out, but it wasn't like the relationship we have now where we will literally do anything for each other. It's just it's without fucking thinking about it. Um, so there was like a lot of weird shit going on. And if fucking next thing you know, I'm getting spam called at fucking 3 a.m. the fucking morning with all this shit. And Brian literally just drew the line. Fuck that shit. I'm not that person. Here's 25% of my company. If you trust me, I got you for life. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like fucking that that's literally because the, the biggest thing for me and B is loyalty. And if you show that loyalty and you like lean into it, then it's just game over. So that like that show of faith um just kind of cemented the relationship instantly. Yeah. And that was it. <clears throat> so Cole stuck with me. Um, and we kept building our aesthetic nation and we like kept building and we hired more trainers uh, that were like loyal to the mission and the movement. Um, we ended up growing the business to $54,000 in July, 2018. Yep. And even though we were making a lot of money in July, 2018, um, I was actually going through a lot of personal shit. And um, at that point, I was actually going through like a massive breakup. So my business, like the business was fucking on fire. Like we were making $54,000 a month, <clears throat> but I was personally going through a breakup. And so I would literally like spend, remember there was like one period of time where I slept on Cole's couch for like a week and a half. I left the house like twice for team meeting. Yeah. I was fucking depressed. <laughs> like literally, I'm like Julia got to know me a lot because I was fucking crying on her goddamn couch. Yeah, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I still, I also, and on like the other side of it, the crying on the couch, like, we'll, we'll pass by that. But the funny thing, and I always bring it up when we talk about meditation. <laughs> this was when Brian was like in his um phase is what I like to call it. When it was like, his um oh, phase, full on meditation, like a fucking monk. Yo, I meditate. It's important. No, I'm talking about like arms crossed, floating off the couch with his fucking arms on his what knees. Fuck fuck meditation. God. Julia came out in the morning to get her coffee and saw Brian was like, oh shit. <laughs> like, right back in the bedroom, like didn't want to wake him up or what fuck with my meditation. flow dog. We didn't want to mess with this flow. It was fucking funny. It was a good time. But um, going through that period of time in my life and like, you guys, $54,000 a month meant that I had 50 clients and me and Cole also had seven trainers that were working with the business. And each one of those trainers had 10 to 30 clients. So I was responsible for like 300 humans and I could barely fucking dress myself at the time. Like I was so depressed and I ended up getting to a point where uh, I was so overwhelmed and I was like, man, I can't, I literally can't do this anymore. Like I can't run the team and serve my clients and be a good, like, I just can't do it all. Yep. And so I remember I, I woke up one morning and I called Cole. I was like, I'm firing all my clients. And he's like, what the hell are you talking about? Like all of them. I'm like, I'm firing all of them. I'm like, I've got 50 clients. There's seven trainers. I'm going to literally uh, call every single one of them. I'm, I'm going to disperse them amongst you guys. And he was like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, like, what did you uh, think? It was also too, guys, because it was, it wasn't just about like the overwhelm based on the clients and everything else that was going on either. It was the fact that it was like aesthetic nation was making a lot of money, but there was also a lot of back end things that were fucking happening. That was like affecting our mental states. It was like a lot of shit that was coming up on a daily basis that I remember when I got that phone call, it was like, uh, Oh shit. Like I knew something big was going to happen based on like how B was acting, but I didn't think it was going to be that. There was no fucking way that that was the thing that I was going to be thinking about right then. So I did it. I ended up, I remember I wrote the post where I was like, I just fired all my fitness clients and everybody was like, what? Because for the longest time, like I was the go-to fitness guy in Calgary. Like aesthetic nation was the place and people wanted to work with me because I was like the guy. Um, and I just fired all my clients and I started just mentoring uh, the trainers um, but in full transparency, you guys, and like, I wanted to kind of like be really, really honest with this podcast. Um, one of the biggest reasons, uh, and I think this is why sometimes adversity can be such a beautiful thing. One of the biggest reasons that I ended up moving away from my fitness clients and, um, wanting to start PT domination is because like through my breakup, when I went through that breakup with this person, <clears throat> um, I had like mentored this person to become an online fitness coach. And obviously with the breakup, I was like, I didn't want, like through our relationship, she became an online coach because she was always hanging out with me and she had a passion for fitness. And I remember when um, we split up and she went her separate ways, like at that point I had let go of, or like separated from, or had a falling out with five online coaches that I had basically mentored on some level, there was a falling out. So maybe for some people it was money for some people. It was like, they got greedy for some people. It was just like, we didn't, didn't see we the didn't, vision, wanted to the do vision, it on their own, wanted to go on their own, there's so much break up, whatever. So at this point I'd like mentored and basically trained five people to be my competition. So I'm like, 
I'm like, yo, fuck this. Like if I'm going to keep giving my knowledge away to everyone, if I'm like really just going to keep giving my knowledge away, like I'm going to start consulting for it. Yep. Like if these people are going to take my information and they're going to fucking start their own businesses, like, and that's like, and at the time, like I wasn't making people sign NDAs because I was just a good person. I'm like, I'm like, I'm just going to teach you. You're going to work with me. And then when it, when they split off, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, almost like thrown off. Um, because it was just so fucking random guys. Like, again, we had like eight trainers over the last little bit, if I'm not mistaken, when I'm thinking about the names and every single one of them to a certain degree, when it reached a certain point, it was more about the money than the vision. Mm -hmm. Um, the only person who's originally here from the very beginning is me. All right. Like helping me grow this. And it was because when I originally joined, it wasn't about the money. It was about the fucking passion, the vision, the fucking purpose, the original reason why we were trying to build this fucking movement in the first place. And I remember that snap moment that fuck this bullshit. I'm so sick of people coming in and trying to build their own thing, even lying about the vision. And so I'm just going to help people do it in the first place instead of trying to act in a different way. 100%. But I didn't know how to like, <clears throat> I didn't know how to package it. Mm -hmm. because like i knew how to mentor online coaches obviously because i had already mentored eight yeah 10 at that point i had mentored 10 or 11 even though a few of them weren't working for me anymore like i knew how to do it but i didn't know how to package it like i didn't know okay like how do i take all the information that i know because like obviously i can't work like just one-on-one -on -one with every single person so like how do i create like how do i take the information out of my head and put it into a course so i started looking for mentors and um, I wanted to start a business and I wanted to start mentoring trainers, but I didn't know how to do it. So I found a mentor to invest in and it ended up being uh, $7,500 upfront and then $7,500 in 30 days. And I straight up didn't have the money. So I called Cole. Yeah, I remember this too. This is fucking funny. So the other day, um, the reason why it's funny is because we kind of like forgot about this story. And the other day we were talking about like, how it really like cemented the partnership and it like really took everything to the next level because a lot of people um i feel like it was also a weird thing when it came to aesthetic nation and the growth of it etc where people didn't understand why like me and b were as close as we were around the partnership and how everything will happen but when this transition came to him wanting to like do business coaching and mentoring coaches and trainers etc when he called me for that guys like it was $7,500 up front. And then again, 7,530 days. All right. The breakdown of it. And he called me, we all sat down in a room. All right. We got the guy, the mentor program. Are we going to say his name? I don't know. Uh, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Scott Olford. All right. He was actually the first guy who kind of pushed um, us in the right direction to start PQ domination to start the first original things for all you OG clients. Listen to this right now. You guys probably, if you ran through our first courses, that's what we learned. Um, and it was $7,500 first. We got them to lay it all out. Like, this is how we're going to be doing it. And it was like, okay, dope. So we split it. It was like $1,750 uh, originally. We all just put it in to pay for the first payment up front. And then the second one in 30 days. And that's how PT domination started. That's how we started to build out the first fucking courses. Dude. And like the first, <clears throat> first ever PT domination course was actually called uh, the eight weeks to freedom bootcamp PS. Yeah. I remember that <laughs> shit. hundred percent. Okay. Guys, uh, the online trainers that are in the Academy right now, can you imagine learning everything that you're learning in the Academy in eight weeks, <laughs> eight weeks? Let's go. Just, but I, I didn't time. know any better. Like I didn't know any better. So I was like, I can teach every, everybody, everything I know in eight weeks and then they'll be fucking good to go. Like a lot of, <laughs> a lot of people if you're in the Academy, you know, like you probably, you hit stride around week two or three. And by the time week six or seven comes around, like you're starting to sell some clients, but imagine like then cutting the ties and being like, okay, bye. Like, bye, -bye. I, just, Get out. I just like, anyways, that's what I did. Um, that's what we were doing at first. And I remember like, guys, when, I, I want to talk a little bit about like when I invest in the mentor too, because I think a lot of you guys, when you're investing in mentorship, um, almost view it as like a, a ticket to your success, but then don't actually fucking take the train. Um, and here's what I mean by that is like, when I hired Scott Olford and me, when me and Cole, like invest in that together, Cole is still running the business. So like our agreement, I was like, okay, Cole, so you run aesthetic nation. Like you fucking handle the trainers, handle the meetings, everything like that. I'm going to build PT Dom while you do that. So like, I'm going to be fucking, I'm going to be doing eight to 10 to 12 hours a day of coursework, which by the way, I was actually doing. Yeah. And the reason actually I was, that amount of time guys. Actually eight to 10, 12 hours a day for like 45 days, because I didn't have like, even though aesthetic nation was making money, you guys got to remember, like a lot of my profits came from like my own coaching clients. 
And so the business was making 40 to $50,000 a month, but I wasn't because like I fired all my clients that were paying me. And that was a big percentage of my personal profits. So like I was only making percentages of what my trainers were making. So like, I didn't have a lot of fucking extra cash just floating around personally. So like, I like, if I didn't make this shit work, like if I didn't make PT domination work, like I was going to be fucked. Like if I didn't make my investment back from this mentorship program, like I was like in a bad place. And so I wasn't going to let that happen. And the way that I overcame that is I dedicated 10 to 12, like as long as it fucking took so much time, like I'd be watching videos until I fell asleep. And then I'd wake up and I'd continue watching the video and I would continue smashing the units. And then one after the other, after the other, after the other, I started to like build out the PT nomination program to the point where I was like, okay, I'm ready to sell. hundred percent. I remember that shit. And guys, it was honestly crazy because, um, like, again, we talked about the trainers a little bit before we started PT nomination, but it was cr- insane. All right. Like the managing everything on top of it, not only was it what, like I was running a static nation and trying to make sure that everybody was happy while dealing with a bunch of the fires, because then people weren't happy that Brian isn't their mentor anymore. Right. Because they want B to make sure that he's there 24 seven, a fucking day. Um, like he always was, but he got sick of it. And now he's spending 10 to 12 hours here. And then I'm also trying to help him with PT domination. It was fucking crazy. We were putting insane fucking work days in every single day. What can we do here? What can we optimize here? What do you need help with here? Um, it was just literally 24 hours a day. Can I be honest though? I fucking loved it. Same. I loved it, dude. I like, I'm when I'm like looking back on that, like I'm looking back on those days and like, that was the same. So I, that was the summer that I, I, was, I remember I went there in the summer, right? Like I like, cause that was the same uh, year that I did a road trip across Canada with Tara. Do you remember that? Yeah. I was on the road with Tara. And I was like, we'd stop. Like I would just, I was, I literally, you guys, I hotspotted my phone. I had my computer and I was watching the course on my fucking laptop. You did Bali right after that too. Yep. And yeah. then that was when uh, I went to Bali with Kirst and we, I just helped her build her business. We started from like fucking scratch. I like helped her build her business from like the ground up. And mm-hmm. that was, I built the course at the time, the eight weeks of freedom bootcamp and Kirsten was running through it. Um, I sold the tour for $1,500 and I was like, can you test this and make sure it works? And like, all I want is a testimonial out of it. And this is again, Kirsten started back in 2018. We went to Bali together. I worked closely alongside with her for like three, four weeks um, while we were in Bali. And she ended up making six or $7,000 when she was in Bali. She came back to Kelowna and she was like, she was still working at her, at her uh, original Joe's job. And now you guys, it's been two and a half years. Kirsten has 950 clients. She almost has a thousand clients in the Big Blue yep. Boss Academy in the Crazy. last two years. So like, if you're thinking about your business right now and you're at scratch, where could you be in two years if you went all in? Kirsten's been all in for two years. Um, but yeah, PT Domination back then was like, you were still running Aesthetic Nation. PT Domination was starting to get bigger. And we were both, at that point, we were also both running both businesses. Like once I got PT Domination off the ground and I started selling people, I was like, okay, like now I can kind of chill a little bit and I would come into Aesthetic Nation meetings again because I was more passionate about it because I was doing something I was excited about yeah. and running PT Dom. But it got to a point, dude, where... Um, we were just like, we, me and you both realized we're like, aesthetic nation is number one. It's not really making us any money because like, like we started, like, it's just not really making us any money anymore because like, I'm not coaching clients. Like you had your coaching clients, but the amount of work that we had to do in terms of managing all of our trainers and managing all of the fires that, you know, if our trainer has a client and the client fucking fires, right. If they're, if our trainer has a client and our trainer isn't fucking helping that client out properly, then they come to us. Like all the things that we had to deal with were like, this isn't worth it anymore. So um, I remember, like, I remember that, you remember the phone call when I called you and I was like, let's, let's fucking dissolve aesthetic nation. Yeah, I do remember that. It was honestly kind of like a, um, like an ongoing thing to a certain degree. And it wasn't because we didn't like enjoy the company of our trainers that we had in aesthetic nation. It wasn't the fact that we weren't like passionate about building aesthetic nation guys, but because we still talk about that all the time. Like we still talk about fucking the growth that we saw with AEN and like how far we could have took it. But it was the fact that the, the culture was gone. Like it was more about like everybody just wanted fucking money. And when me and Brian were building at the very beginning, like it wasn't about that. It was about the fucking attitude. It was about the culture. It was about the aura of AEN. And it just reached a point where we're like, we're fucking done. Like Mm -hmm. if, if 
I want to deal with this much fucking business fires on a daily basis. I wouldn't have fitness clients and I would just be only full-time in PT domination. Mm -hmm. Um, but I wanted to do both at the time and I wanted to keep both alive, but it just got way too exhausting. So when I'm B called me and he's like, what do you think about dissolving a N so we don't have to put any mental energy into it anymore because it's become a fucking annoyance for lack of a better term. I was like hundred percent in. Dude, and like when we say dissolving, like we built that business for four and a half, five years. And uh, we literally dissolved it on a single phone call. Like we, yep. we had our team meeting and we, like we had the conversation with Cole. I was like, how are we going to do this? We're like, we just got to fucking rip the bandaid off, bro. Literally so they just said, I'm done. Like yeah. fucking we'll get on the call. We'll break it down. We'll explain why. And that's it. Game over. And we just like, and, and also you guys, like we weren't like shady or savage or anything. We're like, guys, listen, like we're dissolving the company, which means that you get to take all of your own clients. And you get to start your own business and all of the money is yours now. Because one of the biggest complaints was that like they had to split the money. So it's like, okay, well now all the money's yours. Like you don't, now you don't, so there now you, you don't go. have to split it anymore. And of course there was like, I think everyone was cool with it at first. And there was a little bit of resentment that we dealt with afterwards. And it is what it is. Like, I think everybody involved, like, I still like, I still have love for everybody that was in the business. Um, but we dissolved both businesses. And at that point, Cole then took all of his clients and he started what his brand and his brand is Amarok coaching a hundred percent. And then I started Amarok coaching because I still have like a very um, big underlining passion for fitness coaching. It was, and the reason why is because that's what changed my life. That's what got me out of drug addiction, alcoholism, all those different things. So I was like, okay, we're dissolving AEN. Great. Now I can do Amarok coaching and Amarok again is my brand. You guys know that Amarok aesthetics, Amarok to Silva is my gaming brand. The wolf that he always wears. The wolf that I always wear is actually made on my face, by the way. Um, if you're on the video version of this podcast right now, you guys can actually see it's on my journal. This wolf is made off my face. I got it actually made by a designer and the left eye has a slice through the uh, eye of it because my left eye is three quarters blind. So like I actually really had like a deeper passion for it. And the, so I brought everybody through it. I rebranded everything to Amara Coaching. Um, but at this time with Amara Coaching, because we dissolved AEN, I was a lot more hands-on with PT Dom. Um, so not only was I doing the fitness coaching, but I was also doing coaching calls and coming in and helping and sitting in on brand meetings and fucking marketing meetings and going through stuff to make sure that PT Dom was pushing like it, we wanted it to push all the way back when we first invested in Scott Oldford. So it was a lot. It was intense. And then uh, and then we got to a point where like, honestly, you guys, once we dissolved that nation, like it was pretty fucking easy for me to go all in and just be all in with PT Dom. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was so excited every single day, like. That's when I started the change labs, make money online training podcast. Cause right. I had more time. I was like, dude, I have more time. So now I can actually go all in with this thing. Like I was like half in for a while, but I'm like, no, nah, I'm just going to go fucking all in. Yeah. So I started getting busier and busier. Um, I remember after what well, we actually hired my current mentor who, by the way, I'm still fucking with uh, Tacky Done. Moore. And Done. Tacky Moore, by the way, is an absolute legend. He's a business coach for business coaches. And this dude is just like, this dude is like the wizard Next of level. wizards. Yeah. The wizard of wizards is tacky more. Um, I only have amazing things to say to, about him. So if you, if you end up listening to this podcast and you check him out, like he's fucking super, super, super smart dude. But I met tacky and uh, me and tacky started working together and PT nomination was doing really, really well because once I understood how to like package my, the information that was in my brain, it was like pretty easy for me to find clients because I already knew how to get clients. Like when I was a fitness coach, like that's why I'm so good at helping you online fitness coaches get clients. Cause I already knew how to do that. That wasn't the problem. The biggest problem for me was figuring out how to like package my IP, I guess, if that makes sense, like take the data out of my brain and turn it into a course. Mm -hmm. but once I did that, the business started to grow a lot and it started to grow a lot to the point where like, we had like about a hundred clients. And, um, I was like, I remember I was like, I can't do this by myself anymore. I'm like, I'm fucking busy as hell. And Cole was still had Cole still was running Amara coaching. He still had 30, 40 clients. So he was still pretty preoccupied for 20, 30 hours of the week. Um, so I was like, I'm fucking busy and I can't do this all by myself anymore. So I called Cole and I'll let you talk about that conversation. Yeah. And I remember that conversation and this was honestly guys like, um, so I was talking about how I still have like a very high passion for fitness, but this was honestly like me kind of reaching my limit to a certain degree. 
Um, now, if you do listen to this and you're one of my old fitness coaching clients, know that I fucking love you. All right. Know that I still love you to death. Uh, but I, when I say I was reaching my limit, you guys all know me. All right. You hear me on this podcast every single Wednesday. If you're one of our clients listening to this, you understand my mentality. I fucking cannot stand excuses. I like it excuses, laziness, like anything like that, it drives me mental because like me and Brian are literally the definition of what can happen if you just shut the fuck up and work. Like li- the definition of it, we've gone through every bad fucking situation that you can think of from when we were young to now. Um, and by that time, all right, I think around 40 clients, like 35 clients at MRO coaching, we got a hundred clients of PT domination. Literally, we were like barely sleeping. We're grinding every fucking day. We're working at each other consistently. Brian hit me with that call. And my mindset was, do I, Dude, I, I didn't even, I didn't tell him what I said though. What did I say? Uh, you tell me what you said. You just fucking tell him. <laughs> You just asked me if I wanted to give up all my fitness clients and <laughs> fucking come to PT domination. I was literally, I was literally like, uh, so uh, I have a proposition for you. He's like, yeah, we had a hundred clients of PT domination at the time. And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember I felt awkward pitching it because I'm like, I don't, I don't know what the, this motherfucker is gonna say. I was like, uh, uh, I want you to stop taking fitness clients. He's like, what? I'm like, I, I want you to stop taking fitness clients and I want you to let go of all your fitness clients. He's like, uh. <laughs> and it was like a weird conversation because in my mind right away it was like well what do you mean like because we spent so much time building the brand and it was like uh coming to pt domination and like just like basically amrock coaching would start to be dissolved and kind of like stop existing to a certain degree um but then there was the mindset in my head all right so after brian asked me the question like how would you feel about dissolving your like your fitness clients and like stop taking on fitness clients the thought in my head was very simple move into business coaching. And this is kind of something that's always been in the back of my mind. And one of the reasons why I decided to do business coaching and like go into PT domination instead of MROC coaching was lean towards business coaching and teach people to do what I did. So you guys can experience the same fucking thing that me and Brian have experienced, which is fucking amazing, or continue with fitness coaching and kind of go through what I was losing passion for. Um, And it wasn't just because of the fact that fitness coaching clients were driving me mental, <laughs> like talking about how uh, it's so hard to lose weight when they're not fucking following their nutrition program. I'm assuming you guys know what I'm talking about to a certain degree, but it was also because I was so fucking busy. I was neglecting my own fitness goals. So I wasn't even passionate about fitness anymore because I didn't have any time to fucking invest in my fitness because I was so swamped. So it was a weird conversation to have. Like it was a weird um like question when brian asked me that it was there's a, a lot of emotions going through my head like okay dissolving amarok coaching knowing how much amarok coaching meant to me like giving up the fitness clients and then that would be like as soon as amarok coaching died that was like the yo fitness coaching is done for us now because guys like when brian left aen or whatever a lot of his clients came to me because they fucking resonated with both of us for so long so like we had clients for like five years still working with us yeah yeah. through Amarok coaching. So it's like, as soon as that happened and I drew that line, it was like, oh, now we're done. Like now it's fucking officially dead for the, the beginning um, dream, the beginning thing that we started there. So it was a really weird um, conversation at the beginning because it was like a lot of emotions built up with that. And then it, we just continued progressing. So from that point, it was about five or six months and we were, uh, we would just work together. So um, at that, t- at that point, we were still selling our program was $5,000 back yep. then. So we were still selling our $5,000 program. And I would like book a call. Uh, I book calls and then Cole would get on the call sometimes. Sometimes I would get on the calls. We were kind of like tag teaming and we were still trying to figure out like how we were going to work in the business together because my social media was the one that everybody was coming through. Yep. So we were figuring out like how to set it up so that it wasn't weird because they booked a call through my social media and then they talked to Cole. It was like a weird situation. So we were like still figuring out the logistics of like how to run a bigger business because we were fucking busy and I couldn't take all the calls by myself and coach all the clients. So slowly over time, we started to figure it out. Um, I think one of the biggest shifts for me at least was um, me and Cole, me and Cole used to do these like little mini masterminds uh, when we first started out. So these little mini masterminds for us were these like, it was like me, Cole, um, Nikki Korak, if you're still here, <laughs> I don't know yeah. if you're here, uh, Nikki Korak, there'd be like me, Cole, Nikki Korak, Nicole Troutman, and like Brenda. And there'd be like four clients that we sold for $5,000 a piece. And we worked with them for eight weeks and we get on like this little mini call with them. And it was just, that, that was the start. Like yeah. that was how we started. And, and that I was actually like, 
uh sorry but those mini ones that actually brings back such big memories right there that's actually where the like little elite mastermind came into with natasha fucking natasha um, maverick uh, uh yeah. caleb oh, dude like that dude. was fucking funny i forgot about those mini little mini ones right away you want to hear a funny story so me and cole ran this uh mastermind called the elite mastermind where we we had um we had a couple of clients that went through a program that got killer results and they wanted to continue working with us so what we did is we just charged them like 1500 usd a month or something like that for one call a week and uh we met with them it was like four people we met with them every weekend every saturday like we were still building our business right and that we worked with them for about like a year year and a half straight for like every weekend for like a year yeah and all four of those people um that it was like natasha natasha's making like seventy five thousand dollars a month right now has 100 employees yeah has 100 employees uh caleb sprinkle is making about fifty thousand dollars a month right now uh, Christian Fleener is making fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars a month right now, and Maverick's making fifty thousand dollars a month right now. Isn't yep. that crazy? All four Slaying of them are it. fucking crushing it. Slaying it. It's yeah. fucking crazy to me. It is crazy. So um, that was basically how PT Domination started. Um, and then uh, a few months later, when COVID hit, obviously people couldn't pay the five thousand dollars for the uh, for the business coaching program. So me and Cole got on a call and we're like, "That's where it changed." I'm like, let's fucking, let's figure this out. Like, it's my favorite call of all time, guys. Like yeah. I get so amped up when we talk about the, the beginning of the Academy, because it was, it, it, it flowed really well. Like, yeah. because, um, it wasn't even just uh fucking COVID because, and I don't even know if Brian remembers this, but I remember like midway through us starting this, like maybe six months, seven months before COVID even hit, um, we were talking about building a membership area. Mm -hmm. We were talking about building an area for the average fitness coach who might not already be killing it for the person who wants to get started for the person who like can't fucking afford all these other mentors that were like 2,500 to $5,000 a month, including us. Subscription. <laughs> and we were as well, like ours was expensive when we first started because that's what the average was. That's what that's what fucking everybody charged. So we just followed the tone and wanted to provide a better service. So when we started talking about the membership site and then COVID hit, the phone call just came naturally. And it was like, all right, it's time to fucking make it happen. What can we do? What's the price range? What are we going to build? And what we started breaking down all the ideas and coming up with concepts and running through it. And then names came up and we started thinking about the names and the 10K Coaching Academy got thrown out there and boom, we just fucking went off. Uh, we're like, let's do a coaching program that costs a few hundred dollars a month. Yep. And it'll be so fucking easy for people to enroll because it's so cheap and they'll sell one fucking client. And if they sell one client, they'll make their investment back. They'll be super stoked. Like if we can build this like Academy where we only ask for a few hundred bucks and in return, we just deliver them a shitload of value. Literally. I remember this conversation like super clearly. So like, it's going to grow like crazy because we'll work with like, you know, we'll work with the first hundred to 200 students and then they're going to get crazy results. And then they're going to tell their friends, that there's a business mentor that isn't asking them to sell their fucking house, yep. to learn how to run a business, like not asking for a $10,000 down payment and still getting crazy results. And, and that was it. And we started, that was a year ago. And we uh, built it, like, it in five days. We built the account. Yeah, we, exactly. Oh, I think it was like seven or eight, actually. I fucking like that. Literally guys, we went so fucking fast. It wasn't even funny. We decided on that phone call. We named the program. Brian started building up the marketing for it. I started building the back end, And then I, I think it was five days, but you're saying it's seven, whatever. Um, <laughs> five to seven days. Yeah. It was launched and we started enrolling clients. Literally yeah. that fucking fast. Dude. And there's, here's, here's another thing you guys should write down. Take advantage of windows of opportunity because like, man, if you're not on fucking TikTok right now, what the fuck? Like, oh, it's a window of opportunity, right? And so for me and Cole, like, uh, Kirsten actually wrote a post about this the other day, and, and she wrote a post, and it was basically talking about how, like, she was like, how did you end up getting 900 clients? Like, straight up, you guys, we, like, I, I, we just saw a window of opportunity, and we fucking pounced on it. Yeah. Like, we didn't, like, think about it. We didn't, like, ruminate on it. We didn't, like, consider it. We were just like, this is, like, this is fucking huge. For us, like we can come into the market and we can dominate if we like provide a service that's incredible at a super low price point compared to everybody else. Like we're going to get people crazy results. So let's take immediate and massive fucking action and just like move forward as soon as you possibly can. And so if you're an online fitness coach and you're listening to this, like take that lesson. Like that, I think that's like, a, that's one of the core lessons here is move as fast as you possibly can. 
Mm-hmm. So we didn't really know what the fuck we were doing. With the fuck 10K. No. I, and uh, the 10K Academy now, the people that are enrolled in the 10K Academy now, like this service that you guys get is fucking night and day compared to a year ago because we just didn't know any better. We started it. And guys, the thing is, and the, one of the reasons why we, me and B have seen such, such success is because not only do we move very quickly, but we're fluid in what we do. Mm. Um, so when we started the Academy, it was built like that. All right. We took advantage of that window of opportunity, but then we listened to fucking you guys. Mm. All right. And that's how the Academy grew. That's how it became what it is today. Because over the last year, um, if we got advice or if we got like constructive criticism, it was fixed and changed like that. Like literally as soon as we got the fucking text or the message, because we wanted to grow, we wanted to optimize the program because I like getting messages as a business coach saying, I don't think I should buy your program because it's probably bullshit and garbage because of how cheap it is. We've got those messages before, by the way. Not anymore. We used to, right? get, <laughs> we used to get we, those. We've legit had those before. Those. It's fucking hilarious. Nobody says so, that anymore now. <laughs> I was like, I, I like when people fucking literally look at the investment, see the fucking results and they're like, is this the real fucking deal? They come in and it's the best fucking program that you will see out there. Dude, I actually, I think that people used to say that a lot. Like they used to be like, oh man, like it's so cheap. Like it must be fucking shitty. But then when you notice the number, the number on my bio fucking increasing every fucking day, like Which every we got month. up by one, by the way, because we hit one. Oh, know. Mike McDonald. Where are yeah. you, Michael? Mike McDonald, where are you? Mike McDonald. Mike McDonald. Cole told me I'm locking on Facebook, but Cole told me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ha- temporarily in Facebook jail because I told somebody I was going to throat punch them in a comment. We're not going to talk about that on the podcast. Bug I'll be rights. back. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Um, but dude, uh, so what would you say if we had to, like, let's summarize like a core lesson. Let's like, let's summarize a core takeaway for, for the podcast listeners that just kind of came on an adventure with us. For me, I think one of the biggest things that I want to share Uh, about this story is that like number one is is sometimes you're the adversities that you go through can be the biggest blessings that you'll ever experience because I think that when some people go through hard times and some people are like maybe it's a breakup or maybe they're moved to a new city they're depressed maybe they lost their job maybe they're just going through a really fucking hard time like honestly like if it wasn't for that breakup back in 2018 I don't think I would have started pizza domination because I think that I would still be content, like running aesthetic nation content and just kind of like, you know, I don't know where I'd be right now, but I definitely wouldn't be uh, the owner of PT Dom and, and partners with Cole because uh, in terms of PT Dom, because I think that I was just on, you know, I was on a decent path at the time and the breakup kind of fucking rocked me. And so, and that rocked me and that woke me up and that caused me to make a massive fucking change. And so my message is that if you're listening to this right now, and, and you're, you go through adversity and you're struggling on some level. Like, I want you to know that like rock bottom is a foundation that you could build from. I think that's my main, my main lesson. A hundred percent. Um, if I was to give one, it would be to just take risks, like take risks and embrace the uncomfortable. Um, guys, like I did four years as an iron worker. All right. When I think it was four years, I got to go back to the timeline because fucking somebody challenged me on that the other day and it messed with my shit a little bit. Um, but I was high as fuck all the time. So I might have a weird, <laughs> I might have a weird timeline, but yeah, I did four years as an iron worker. All right. I went through my apprenticeship. i left my hometown for that shit. I literally completely engulfed myself in it and I was fucking miserable. And I didn't know what I was going to do in my life or anything like that. And then I met this random fucking guy that helped me become a fucking uh, fitness competitor that helped me start working on my goals that helped me get out of fucking drug addiction, et cetera. And it was a huge risk literally just fucking saw the opportunity to do it quit. And if I wouldn't have taken that risk, if I wouldn't have quit my job to become a PT, I wouldn't be sitting in front of you guys today as your coach. Who knows how this all would have played out. That's the thing, right? Like everything fucking, and it's such a cheesy saying, but everything happens for a fucking reason, but like risks is everything. If we didn't take a risk and try to start the Academy when COVID hit, who knows where all you guys would be right now. All right. Who knows if fucking half of you guys would have been able to see the results that you already fucking have. Risk is everything for me. Like I love being uncomfortable and that's why I always lean into it. All right. I talked about this to Julia all the time. Um, I'll like tell her if I like get something that happens in life where it makes me feel uncomfortable, it like triggers an uncomfortable response in my body. I will literally tell her like, we need to do this. 
I don't care what it is, but I need to lean in. I, I it's, it's a risk. It's freaking me out. It's giving me anxiety, but I need to lean in because every single time I've ever leaned into anything uncomfortable, my life has changed drastically. Mm. Always. So don't be fucking afraid for that shit. It's going to be intimidating, but if you see something that might have a benefit on your life, just lean into it, no matter what the consequences are. Dude, I love that. And I think that if you're tuning into this right now and you're listening to this podcast, you're like listening to me, Cole, and Cole talk about how we built our business to 900 clients in two and a half years. Yep. And um, we, we're, we're like living our dream. Um, here's what I want you guys to know <clears throat> is that Cole and I are humans just like you. Mm -hmm. We breathe just like you. We have fears just like you. We had doubts just like you. Like we, we got started just like you. Like we're human beings just like you. And the message for me is like, yo, like this is like, this is not a life that's available to only the select few. Like only, it's like only like the special among us. It's like, if you want to be successful, and I mean like, I mean like turbo successful, like I'm talking like owner of your own business, you know, employees working for you and helping you build your vision and making a massive impact on the world and helping like hundreds of clients. Like if that's what you want, like that's available to you. Like you can fucking do that. Anyone can. Anyone right, and it's can. such a generic thing, like the anything is possible mentality and the anything is possible fucking quote, but it's literally true. Literally the truest fucking statement ever. I, like me and Brian came from nothing, guys. I used to be a Walmart stalker in Thunder Bay. All right, like fucking working at a, a, a pawn shop and a fucking movie theater, like all the way to here. Dude, and, and I think like the going. biggest part for me is that like knowing that this isn't the fucking end, like this is the no. start, this is the beginning. It's only been a year. Dude, exactly. Like, where, where have we come in the last 12 months? And then where are we going to go in the next 12? Like, for me, it's like looking at this vision board that I have in my office of our, like, peach nomination vision and where we're going and the impact we plan on having. Like, the amount of lives that we're currently impacting in the 10K Coaching Academy right now, like, inspires me to never fucking stop pursuing my dreams. Yep. Because I know that, like, by me actively pursuing my dreams and by me actively, like, pushing myself to be the best that I can be every single day, playing full speed, going all out, doing the best that I can. Like, I know that like my life is serving as a, as a testament to those people that are like looking up to me and trying to build their own thing. And I like never want to fucking stop. hundred percent. Same page. Boom. That's it, bro. I love it. That's it. Um, cool, bro. Where do they find you? You guys can check me out on TikTok or Instagram at cool Lewis De Silva or the wake up with the wolf podcast. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. This is the Change Lives Make Money on the Internet Podcast, the number one show for online fitness coaches. If you got value from today's episode and you want to be entered to win $1,000 cash, reminder, we're giving away $1,000 in June. So all you need to do, screenshot this podcast episode, share it to your Instagram stories, tag me at BMarkFit. Let me know that you're tuning in and you're automatically entered to win $1,000 cash. Peace, love, protein. We'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Let's go.